Over the past 10 years, I've built and consulted on over 300 service business websites, and I've taught thousands of my students to create highly converting client gen websites since then. But today I thought I'd do something a little different and just answer some website questions that I found floating around the internet that you probably have too. Let's do it. Okay, question one, should I use WordPress or Wix for my small business website. Here's the thing, WordPress is way better than Wix and I'll tell you why. So with Wix, you're basically locked into their templates. Now, technically, yes, you can move things around and you can customize sections, but I've played with it and it all feels super unstructured in a way that just can get you into a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing or what should go where on a website. Not to mention with Wix, you're basically renting that site from them and you can't move it to any other hosting. So it's not really your site. And did you know that over 43% of all websites online are built on WordPress? That includes a ton of major companies. So with WordPress, you can make literally anything you need and can think of thanks to the sheer number of plugins that exist that can extend its functionality and what it can do. And you can use the Elementor page building plugin on top of it to get a pretty similar but much better experience than you could get with Wix. Trust me on that. Okay, question two. How much should a basic small business website cost? Well, a simple five to six page site can run anywhere from 500 bucks if you went to Fiverr or something like that, all the way past five figures if you were to get an experienced designer. But here's where it gets more interesting. So where you get real value is when you can find someone who goes beyond just design and actually brings expert sales copywriting and you know user experience principles and real strategy to your website project. Because at the end of the day, a designer designs, right? They usually don't bring too much in the way of strategy or copywriting. So if you find someone who does both, you can expect to pay above 10,000 bucks for a really well thought out site that has a real conversion first approach. And I don't even think of that money as a cost. That is an investment because it's likely to pay for itself over and over again through new clients that it brings in. That's what the strategy's for. But you know, if you hire a designer that just designs at any cost, even if it's just 500 bucks, that is truly just a cost because you're really unlikely to see any real ROI on it. There's a big difference. Okay, question three. Should I put my service prices on my website or make people contact me for a quote? Yes, put your prices on your website. Look, people coming to your site are looking for enough information to be able to feel comfortable taking that next step to contact you. And pricing is a really huge part of that equation. If you don't show it, they're just gonna keep looking around elsewhere until someone is transparent enough with them and the odds are that company is gonna get their business. You know, even if you can't list out hard prices, you can still talk about ranges or starting at prices or go over specific jobs that you've done, right? What was included and what was paid. So they can at least get enough of a sense to take that conversation further. Being mysterious and cagey about your prices doesn't create intrigue, it just creates bounce rate. Okay, question four. Full website versus single landing page. Which is better for a service business? You almost always need more than one page so that people can you know, choose their own adventure and dive deeper into whatever they care about the most, whether that's the testimonials or pricing, about us, whatever they're interested in. But I like to structure the homepage like a landing page where they can pretty much get, you know, a taste of all of it in a really linear path that gives them all the right information in the right order as they scroll down. Then from there, they can learn even more in a section by clicking through to that page. The homepage should almost act like a one-stop shop for the people who are just closer to making a decision. Think of it as your conversion engine and the other pages are there to support anyone who needs more specific information before they're ready to reach out. Question five, how do I write an about us page for my one person business? So your about page is the one chance on your site to really lay into the why behind what you do, right? What problem did you see in the marketplace that you knew you had to solve or why can you just not see yourself doing anything else other than this? In other words, it does need to be a personal story, especially 
as a solopreneur, if you're a one-person business. In that case, you are the business anyway. But even for a larger company, it needs to do the same kind of thing, right? Why did the owner go into this business in the first place? So it should be more about that than things like where you went to school, but it should still hit on why you're uniquely qualified to be the one to help me. People connect with stories and passion, not credentials. Though don't get me wrong, if you've got impressive credentials, you, you definitely wanna work those in there too. Just make a little less of a deal about them. Question six, should I build my website myself or hire a professional? Here's the thing, here's what I'll say. If you can afford to hire a pro and you can either afford to pay them for the strategy part too, because remember, your site's only gonna be as good as its copywriting and if it's properly set up to sell your offer. So if you're willing to pay for all that too, or if you can provide that strategy to your designer, go for it. As easy as creating your own site can be these days, there's still gonna be a slight learning curve. And if you're not a good designer and you go too far off course, your site can still look pretty amateurish. But if you've got a tight budget, I would recommend signing up for my masterclass where I can at least get you on the right path strategy-wise. And I'm gonna drop a link to that in the description below. But even if you plan to DIY it, having a strategy in place first, that's gonna save you so much time and help you avoid all the most common mistakes. Question seven, has anyone used AI to build a website like 10Web or Wix ADI? I've tried this, I even made a video about it, and it's unfortunately nowhere near ready to be considered as a viable option yet. The only pro to using an AI builder is you'll get a site built for you in minutes. Will that site get you any clients? No, it will not, right? You're much better off spending a weekend carefully creating a site that's actually gonna be worth every minute you spend on it than just taking a shortcut that's just gonna not only not do anything for your business, it can actively harm your business. Now, don't get me wrong, AI is amazing for certain things. We've got a question about that a little later, but building entire websites from scratch, not there yet, right? You still need to add the human touch to make strategic decisions about what goes where and why. Question eight, this is a good one. How can I make my website copy stand out when my services are really similar to competitors? Well, you wanna start by positioning your customer as the hero, not your business or your services. So you wanna talk directly to their frustrations and their hopes and dreams. Like what do they ultimately want? So instead of going on and on about what makes us great as a company, what services you offer, Focus on why it matters to your client, right? That's how you're gonna differentiate yourself through outcome-focused language. Your competitors are probably talking all about features and about themselves. You wanna focus on the results you deliver and you wanna back it up with real testimonials that are gonna showcase the wins that your clients have had thanks to you. You know, make your copy really easy to scan on your website because people scan websites, they don't read them word for word. Use really clear headers that grab attention, followed by really short visual descriptions. And you definitely want to include strong calls to action that encourage people to take the next step and you make it easy for them to know exactly what to do. And this is all about just framing your services as the bridge between where your clients are struggling now and where they want to be. That's how you make similar services stand out from what everyone else is offering, because chances are, they're just saying it in a way that doesn't do any of that. Question nine, do I really need a website for my service business or can I just rely on social media pages instead? Yes, you need a website, sorry to say, but for any business in 2025, it is just the bare minimum, right? If someone hears about you from a referral or from your social media, when they're serious, they're gonna look for more info. And that's when they go to your website. You know, It's where you control the conversation and tell that start to finish journey about how you can help them. Without that, your business is just you know, scattered posts everywhere. The only possible caveat here is if you're on YouTube or if you have a popular podcast, you know, long form content, not just those short little posts from social media. But even then, you still wanna bring people back to a website, but it could be a simpler version because your long form content already has done a really good job of selling them on your services. But 99% of the time, you do need a website and the work you'll put into it over a weekend is well worth the benefits. Social media platforms come and go, 
you know, we saw the whole TikTok drama a few months ago and algorithms change overnight, but your website, that is yours. All right, 10, contact form versus email link. Which is better on my website's contact page? Here's the thing, never list your email address on your website. That's just gonna lead to it getting scraped by spammers and with AI, it's so much easier to do that now. And that just means you're gonna get a ton of spam emails. So a contact form is much better. With that, they can still get in touch with you without your email address being public and, and out there for people to find. Plus with a form, you can ask specific questions that are gonna help you qualified leads before they even hit your inbox. You know, you can ask them things like, what services are you interested in? Or what's your timeline? Which gives you context before you even respond. Forms are just cleaner, safer, and more strategic overall. Question 11, should I use stock photos or real photos on my website? So photos on your website are almost always there just to help you tell the story of how you help people, which means most of them should be, you know, what I call the happy customer photo, meant to show that happy after state that people find themselves in after they've worked with you. And in that case, stock is perfectly fine as long as it doesn't scream stock, right? You know, things to watch out for here are really unnatural poses and facial expressions, like people literally jumping for joy, excited because you got them a tax deduction. Nobody does that in real life, so it just feels fake, right? It's much better to show that person looking relieved or satisfied or peaceful, like a real moment was captured in time. But you don't even need to pay for stock anymore. You can use AI to generate images for you that look 100% real, and you can make it pretty much anything you need. So I like to use Midjourney for that. The only time you're gonna need real photos photos taken yourself or by a professional photographer you hire are those team photos of you and or your team for your about page. It's really important to show that real people are behind the business or the other case might be of, you know, photos of your work. If you're selling something visual, like if you're a contractor or a designer or a landscaper, something like that, where they're judging you based on the visuals of your work. Question 12, is it okay to use AI, like ChatGPT, to write content for my small business website? 100% yes, I do it all the time, and it can work great if you know how to do it right. Don't think of it like cheating, it really isn't. It's a tool that can improve on what you could do yourself. AI can not only help you research the phrases that your clients use all the time to help you capture those words on your site, but it can take your really roughly formed ideas in your head and transform them into really well-worded, polished website copy that does a great job, right? Better than you would write yourself if you're not a sales copywriter, which I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say most people watching this aren't. It can also save you from the trap of writing, you know, overly corporate. You just like put whatever corporate jargon you have and say, make this read more naturally. It can even write in any proven copywriting sales framework that marketers have used for years. It knows them all. And here's a pro tip. I actually recommend using Claude at this time. Right now, they're the leader in terms of just kind of natural human sounding writing. Just make sure that you give it clear direction on your brand voice and who your audience is. That's gonna help it out a lot. Question 13, how can I allow clients to schedule appointments on my website? Now this is a question after my own heart because I love letting prospects just book something directly because it cuts out all that annoying back and forth, right? When they fill out a form, you get back and say, hey, when's a good time to talk? And they're like, I don't know, like maybe next week. And then the negotiation starts, right? Of what time works for who. And then you throw different time zones into it, forget about it. I like to use Calendly instead, which just syncs with my Google Calendar and it only shows those prospects the times that I'm actually available. Then they know when to expect the appointment because they put it at whatever time they wanted and it cuts down on no-shows dramatically when you do that. You can even set it up to automatically send reminder emails or texts. It's just one of those small things that makes a huge difference in converting website visitors into actual conversations, which is, where the real magic happens in service businesses, right? Okay, question 14. Can I use a pre-made template for my website design or do I need a custom design to look professional? Now this takes me back, like when I used to work with clients, they put a huge premium on, they wanted something super creative. They wanted something that felt that was just made for them. But in theory, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a template. Not for the reasons 
that you may be thinking anyway, right? People think it's cheating or it's gonna make their business look less unique. Here's the truth. Nobody's hiring you based on the uniqueness and creativity of your website. Maybe unless you're a web designer yourself. So don't worry about that at all. But I don't love templates because they can actually be surprisingly hard to work with, especially when you're talking about, you know, WordPress themes. But if we're talking about using templates that come with a page builder like Elementor, I love using those. They're a great jumping off point and you can add in all of your own stuff, even new section blocks. You can delete the ones you don't need, all that good stuff until it looks like your own website that serves your content. Because remember, the content is the important part, right? The words sell your offers. The website just needs to properly serve that content. The idea of a website needing to be custom, as in built from the ground up, is nothing you should ever be worried about. Clients won't give you any flowers for your site being built custom. They only care about whether it helps them understand how you can solve their problem. Okay, question 15. What are the must-haves for a small business website? This is a big one. It's too big for this video, but don't worry. I've actually got you covered in my newly updated for 2025 masterclass, how to build a client generating website that sells your services for you. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to properly sell your services and possibly just as important, what to take off if you don't wanna scare clients away. So click this video here or in the description and I'll show you everything. It's a game changer, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed by all the conflicting advice out there. See you there.